you got to see us take the entire frame apart and everything's now on the benches. Our power plant right here is looking pretty good, but we got some corrosion in there as we've stated before, along with some case wear. So we're gonna go ahead and take care of that, get this engine taken apart, and hopefully it doesn't need too many other parts, but whatever parts it needs, it's gonna get because I love making my bikes fancy. factory fiberglass reeds, throwing those in the garbage. And getting some nice quality carbon fiber boys. We got it. Oh my God, we did it! We did it guys, finally. That took a long time to finally get that cylinder off of there. It was stuck. We'll start off with the head though. So sadly we got some issues already and we broke the one nozzle off the head. It was corroded, I didn't even feel it break, so I feel like it might have already been cracked and whatever it happened, so we're gonna have to replace that on this. But that'll be okay. The cylinder so far doesn't look terrible. We're gonna clean this thing up, make it find out if it's good enough to use. Uh, do some measuring on it. I don't see any Nicosil, but this is also, I believe, a cast iron bore. It is a cast iron bore. Should be able to board if we have to. I don't know if it's bad, we'll have to measure it up. But it was stuck. The dial pin in the bottom of it was is just rusted in there so bad. All right, we're gonna do some research, see if maybe we can clean this up and then wash the bottom end out. If not, we're gonna have to put a crank in it, which I was really hoping to not have to do on this build. But if we will have to, we will. Rust on here is not looking too great, but the play in the rod is fairly good. And we're not feeling any side to side too much. It's within spec at least, and there's no up and down. So I am gonna go ahead and use some feeler gauges real quick and test this and let you know what it comes out to. And we can make a decision if we're gonna use this or not. So we're gonna go ahead and check the side to side play in our crankshaft and we're gonna use a set of feeler gauges. Mine are by Blue Point and you can get them anywhere. Um, any brand should work, this isn't super duper important. But we looked in our OEM service manual, it says we have plus or minus 30 thou. 30 thou is our maximum side to side movement in our crank. So we got a 16 and a 14 feeler gauge put together to make 30 and we're gonna see if it's within limits. And it is 
just barely going in, but it's not going in past where it needs to go. You see, we're good. I don't even know. Let's see if a 16 will go. A 16 just barely fits in our spot. So we can keep getting bigger until we find out what it actually is. 19 just barely goes. So we got 19 foul of play. So we're still 11 foul to work with before it's bad. So we're probably going to just try and reuse this. And that's our side to side. Up and down also matters, but you can do that by hand. I do not feel any up and down movement in this. So I think this crank's good to go. Possibly gonna be able to wash that out and do it, or we might have to unpress the bottom end and press it back in. At that point, I'll probably end up getting a new crank. Got a climber manual here. Anytime you buy a bike, you're gonna wanna buy a manual for it. Every bike I buy, I know I'm gonna buy a manual just because you wanna have it. You wanna get the OEM one if you can, but climber works, so do do any brand that makes it, they really do a decent job of doing it. So we're just gonna go ahead, you flip in, you go to your engine service maintenance intervals. Factory specs were 0.2 to 0.6 millimeter or 10 to 20 thou is what was factory was made to. It can be as far out as 0.03 or 30 thou inches, 0.7 millimeters. So we are within factory limits still at 19 thou and that is good for us to run. Sad to say we need a bottom end, so we're gonna have to split some cases. I was hoping this was gonna be an easy build where we just pop the cylinder off, throw a piston in, pop the cylinder back on. But it doesn't always work out the way you want it to. So that's good for you guys, because you guys get to see how to split the cases of this 89 CR500. At this point, everything is stripped off of our case. We're ready to go, clutch baskets out, everything's off of that. We're gonna go ahead and flip her over to this side, remove the rest of our eight millimeter bolts, and then pop the cases apart. We aren't going to be able to use the engine stand for this part of the build because the engine stand is held on with those case bolts, but we're going to do our best. We're going to use what's called a blind bearing puller. Now this is a slide hammer and a backwards call it that's gonna grab on the inside of this hole. You can pick these up at Harbor Freight for a good deal. And there we are. So we're now officially unpressed. We're gonna wrap today's part of the build up. At this point in time, we have taken the motor apart and it's completely split. The cases are apart, the crank is out on the table, cylinder, the whole bike is just on the bench. And so far, so good. I'm not upset about anything. I'm not exactly happy I had to split the bottom end, but I am pretty happy with how it is. The grooves on the basket are not as bad as I've seen on multiple other bikes and we're actually not even going to have to need a basket for this bike. Being it's a CR500, you'd expect it to need a basket because it's got a hell of a lot more power than any other bike going into that.
that, but it looks really good, so that's good to say. There is a crack in the back of our piston. I'm not sure how this happened or what's going on, but we didn't find any pieces of aluminum in our bottom end, but we did find that it had this problem. So that's why we decided to pull the bottom end beyond the rust on our crank. The crank, it's not in bad shape. We showed you how to test to see if it was within spec. We are within spec on our side to side and up and down movements. The transmission. We haven't taken the transmission completely apart. It's just on the bench right now. I'm gonna have to get it cleaned up and checked out. But so far, I'm not seeing any chipped gears or any cracks, so that's really good too. And then the bottom end, nobody's taken this bottom end apart from what I've seen. Nothing in there was ever touched by a screwdriver or a wrench or a socket. The crush washer on the basket had never been peened over beyond factory so that's really awesome 31 years old still never been worked on by anyone but slow road the pro stay slow youtube